MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Amit Tada, School of Management, George Mason University. This is our fourth uh, video clip on the topic of simple linear regression. And here we will focus on the diagnostics that accompany any regression output you know, from Excel. So the example we are using is the same as for the prior two uh, clips. We have uh, a sample data on 20 houses. For each house, we have the square footage and the price. The dependent variable is price and the independent variable is square footage. And you see the Excel output that we had used in the previous uh, clip as well. In the prior clip, we had focused on the coefficients for the intercept and slope that was generated by Excel and how to interpret these as sample statistics that are proxies for the true intercept and slope that we really would like to have, but we can't. Okay, so in this um, uh, clip, we will focus instead on the diagnostics that accompany these coefficients to tell us how good or bad they are. So let's begin our discussion by focusing on this one column labeled SS. SS stands for sum of squares. You may recall that from our discussion of ANOVA several uh, classes back. And uh, <clears throat> the first point to notice is that sum of squares has been uh, split up into three components. You have something called total sum of squares something called regression sum of squares and another one called residual sum of squares. The acronyms I will use for these three are SST, uh, SSR and SSE. I prefer to use the acronym SSE standing for error sum of squares instead of residual sum of squares because there are too many R's here over here. So I prefer to use SSE and in fact many statistics textbooks use that as well. So we have SST, SSE, SSR. So these three components, I'll try and give you a physical interpretation of these three numbers. It's useful to have that. And then we will see how these three numbers feed into a very important and popular metric that's used to describe the quality of the regression, which is the famous R squared metric. So let's start our, <clears throat> our discussion, <clears throat> uh, work our way to the uh, geometric interpretation in the, on this new worksheet. All I've done here is taken the independent and the dependent variable and copied them from the first, uh, first worksheet. And uh, I have copied the SST, SSR, and SSE that had been generated by Excel on the first worksheet. I've just copied them over here for reference, all right? Also, I have copied the intercept and the slope, the B0 and the B1 that is produced by Excel. That's the estimated, the fitted line, okay? All right, let's get started over. The first thing that we will do is generate predicted values of Y. So these are values that would be generated if we use the fitted straight line uh, to predict the values of price. So here we go. So the first value of price would be the intercept plus B0 plus B1, which is the slope, times X. That's the fitted value of Y, isn't it? Y hat equals B0 plus B1X. You've seen that from the first video clip. This is my predicted value of Y. So what we're saying here is if I use the fitted line for prediction, then for a house that has a square footage of 1580 square feet, I would predict that the expected price is 115,792. As it so happens, the actual price is 142,500. A little bit different, but I'm not altogether surprised because the fit is not perfect. So let me copy this formula over to the remaining 19 houses. And there we have all the predicted prices. Okay, so column B gives you the actual house prices. Column C gives you the predicted house prices based on the uh, square footage of the house. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's compute the average value of these uh, predicted house prices. Interestingly, do you see that this average price, 120,270, is exactly the same as the average uh, <clears throat> price when, when using the actual prices? So the average of the actual prices is exactly the same as the average of the predicted prices. And this must be the case because you recall from the previous uh, video clip that the best fit line must pass through X bar, Y bar. That can be proven mathematically. And that's why the average of the uh, predicted values of price is exactly equal to the average <coughs> of the actual values of price. Okay, so now let's compute some uh, uh, vari uh, variabilities or, or, or variations, uh, squared deviations here. 
So we take the first price, 142,500, see how far it is from the average price, okay, and square that difference. Square the difference, okay. Now I do that for all remaining 19 houses, and I add these numbers up. Now before I hit return, notice that the number I'm about to compute is a sum of squares. So each number in this list is a squared deviation from the mean. And I sum them up and let's see what we get. Notice that I get exactly SST. So I hope the calculation mm -hmm. gives you a physical interpretation of what we mean by total sum of squares. Total sum of squares is the variability in the actual prices of the houses, in the actual dependent variable. Okay. Now let's do the same for the predicted values. So I will take each predicted value. In this case, we start off with 115,792. How far is it from its mean, which in this case is the same as Y bar, and square that difference okay and i copy that over to the remaining 19 houses and compute a sum again so the sum that i'm about to compute is a sum of squares just like in column d but this time it is with the predicted values in, in other words these are values of price generated by the regression line and let's see what value we get and notice that it's exactly equal to SSR. So this is the variability of the predicted values of price. And as you would expect, if the if the fitted line is if the fit is perfect, in other words, all the data points, all the data points lie exactly on the fitted line, then SSR will be exactly equal to SST. Hence, I think intuitively you can guess that the ratio of SSR to SST gives you some indication of the quality of the fit, whether the regression was a good fit, uh, regression line was a good fit or not. Now let's see what we have, how much error we have. So for each data point, we take the actual value of price minus the predicted value of price, yi minus yi hat, and square that difference. Okay. And I do that, do the same for the remaining 19 houses. And add these numbers up. So I'm about to compute a sum of squares. Again, this is the sum of squares of the residuals or the errors. What's the error? The error is the difference between the actual price and the predicted price. So when I squared those differences and added them up, I got the sum of squares of errors. Okay. And let's see what we get. Do you see that they match exactly? This is exactly SSE. So I hope you saw the physical interpretation of SST, SSR, and SSE. SST is the variability in the actual values of Y, the uh, dependent variable. SSR is the variability in the predicted values of Y. And SSE is the sum of squares of the errors, the residuals for each of these terms. So if the fit is perfect, SSE would be 0 and SSR would be equal to SS. T. So there we have the geometric interpretation for these three terms. So let's get back to our regression. I hope you saw where these three terms, uh, three numbers came from, the physical interpretation, geometric interpretation of SST, SSR, and SSE. So first thing to know, let's write it down. We would say SST is equal to SSR plus SSE. And you can prove that mathematically too, but you've seen it through the numbers. That will always be the case. SSR plus SSE equal to SST. Okay. Remember, I told you that if the fit is perfect, SSR would be equal to SST. Hence, you would expect that SSR divided by SST is an indication of the quality of the fit of the line. So let's see what we get if when we divide one by the other. I will divide SSR divided by SST. And you see, this is exactly equal to this number here, r squared. This is the famous r squared. The, the highest value of r squared that you can get is 1. That's a perfect fit. Numbers close to 0 means next to no fit. There's no relationship between uh, the two variables. Um, and uh, the closer you get to 1, the more perfect um, the fit. 
For now, I will leave this number, the adjusted R squared, hanging. I will revisit it once we get to multiple regression. But for now, let's say the multiple R, the number that you see over here, 0.754, is simply the square root of R squared. You can see that this is exactly the case. Okay. Now, let's look at this next column which says MS. MS stands for mean squared. This is simply sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. Where do these degrees of freedom come from? I will not discuss the mathematical details, but the degrees of freedom for SST is simply sample size minus 1. We have 20 data points. N is 20, so N minus 1 is 19. The degrees of freedom for regression is the number of parameters that are estimated minus 1. So this regression estimated two parameters, isn't it? B0 and B1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's where the 1 comes from. Okay. Similarly, the degrees of freedom for the residual will be 19 minus 1. Uh, uh, but there's another way to, uh, to think about or compute it also. It is equal to the sample size minus the number of parameters that have been estimated. So in our case, the sample size is 20. The number of parameters that have been estimated are, is 2. So 20 minus 2 is 18. That's where we get the degrees of freedom 1, 18, and 9 from. So the MS mean squared is simply sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So that's where you get the 8.75 times 10 to the minus, uh, 10 to the 9. So this is equal to this 8.75 times 10 to the 9 is this number SSR divided by degrees of freedom for uh, <coughs> mm, uh, for the regression. Okay. Similarly, mean squared for the residual would be equal to the sum of squares for the residual divided by the degrees of freedom. Let's see if we get that. So uh, let me widen this column over here a little bit. Mm, so would be equal to sum of squares for the residual divided by degrees of freedom. And there you have your number, which is, do you see that this is exactly equal to MSE? So this number, MSR, MSE. Mean squared is simply another uh, uh, form of, of, of another term for variance. So this F ratio that you have over here is the ratio of these two mean squares. Okay, so let's see what we get over here is equal to MSR divided by MSE. Okay, so do you see this is exactly equal to the F value? All right. Okay. How about the significance of F? This is the P value. How likely is it that I would get such a high F statistic? And you know by now how to compute that. You would use your F dist, the area to the right of 23.816. So here's the F value. The degrees of freedom for the numerator is that for uh, regression. Degrees of freedom for the denominator is 18. And there you have the significance of F. All right. So uh, <clears throat> that is the uh, p-value um, for the f this for the f statistic that we see over here, and the standard error that you see in the regression statistic is simply the square root of MSE of the mean square error. Okay, you can see that these two numbers match up exactly. All right. So this is simply the square root of the mean square error. We will continue with these diagnostics in the next uh, video clip.